and carnage, I bloom like a flower in the dawn. A meticulous and maniacal psychopath whose real name is unknown. Kara Jin was captured by Zed and Shen of the Kinku Order, an Ionian whose desire for art expresses itself in a macabre and twisted fashion. First believed to be a demon by locals, Jin escaped his imprisonment and sought to wreak havoc upon the people of Ionia after the Noxian invasion. Obsessive and dangerous, Jin seeks to paint the world in his image, his actions enabled by a mysterious third party, and his reasoning beyond that of normal comprehension. Jin brought with him the chain of events that would lead to the death of Shen's father, and was first known not as Kada Jin, but the Golden Demon. I never hurt anyone. It is the performance that kills. Ionia is a land filled with natural magic, and is inhabited by different orders living in scattered settlements across the massive archipelago. There are, however, others that inhabit the lands of Ionia. Azakana, defined as a lesser demon, roam through Ionia and are hunted by individuals such as Yone and the Kinku Order. The point here is that there are demons within the lands of Ionia, and they are dealt with as set by the mandate of the Kinku Order, which features members such as Akali, Shen, and Zed. Kara Jin has the unique ability to mold the flesh of his victims. This was confirmed by Riot, and then officially shown in the Zed comic series on issue 2, section 4, meaning that the original teaser video for Jin, showing the deaths of Zed, Garen, Sona, and Vi, would be how the scenes actually appeared for onlookers. A more extreme example is shown in issue 1, section 16, which highlights the twisted fashion that Jin murders his victims with. The sheer brutality and borderline occult nature of the killings led the Kinku Order and people of Ionia to believe that Jin was a demon, and as such he was called the Golden Demon. The mandate of the Kinku Order allows them to hunt demons because they pose a threat to the natural balance and must therefore be dealt with. As a result of Jin being assumed a demon, he was hunted by the Kinku Order for years with no success. Jin's calculation and methodical setup before each brutal murder would allow him to evade the likes of Shen and Zed, and there seemed to be no distance closing between them. Master Kusho, the leader of the Kinku Order, studied the killings and found that there was a pattern. This changed his perspective on the Golden Demon, and he was quoted saying, Good and evil are not truths, they are born from men, and each sees the shades differently. Kusho wanted to stop the investigation. If Jin was not a demon, then the mission to hunt him would extend beyond the Kinku's mandate to maintain the natural balance. Shen and Zed were able to convince Kusho to continue the hunt, refusing to give up after years of chasing Jin. Changing tactics, the duo were able to find and hunt down Jin. He had been traveling as a stagehand under the name of Kada Jin, which can be translated to Golden Excellence. Once Shen and Zed had found the means necessary to act on Jin, they were quick in their actions and were able to hunt him to Piltover and Zorn. At the moment of Jin's defeat, Zed sought to end his mortality, but his life was spared by Master Kusho, who feared for overstepping the Kinku Mandate, and had Jin sent to a prison in Tula, located in Southern Zion, an island of Ionia. To the majority of Ionia, Jin never existed. The Golden Demon was killed by the Kinku Order, and all returned to normal. As time passed, however, the isolated nation of Ionia would fall victim to the invasions of Noxus. And after surviving the invasion, Jin escaped from Tula and was set to wreak havoc yet again. Art requires a certain cruelty. Jin is a character crafted and defined by his actions, but also his intention behind them. It's impossible to relate to his maniacal desire to murder people and call it art, but it is possible to look into his character's design to note a few things. As a self-proclaimed artist, Jin has a specific set of tools that he employs in order to create his maniacal schemes. 
One of these pieces of equipment includes his mask, a peculiarly fashioned shape that covers his face with asymmetrical pattern work adorning its symmetrical shape. The mask, however, is more than just a showpiece, it holds a function. Perception is incredibly important when working with art. A very simple example when speaking about artwork would be depth. People have two eyes, and looking at everything from two separate but slightly different angles results in a visual illusion that helps us to see. This is stereo vision, and it's not a problem unless you're trying to get an unfiltered view of something. Traditionally trained art students have long been advised to close one eye when looking at their source. Closing one eye effectively blocks stereo vision and helps the artist to view their three-dimensional subject closer in appearance to what the artwork will eventually look like. Jin's mask actually covers his right eye for this exact purpose, and is an example of how Jin attempts to frame his murders as art. Jin's aesthetic design in itself is something unique. Many characters are designed within a symmetrical framework, as it's often seen as an appealing design choice. Jin employs an asymmetrical fashion in his outfit, asymmetry being parts that fail to correspond to one another in shape, size, or arrangement. His core aesthetic is composed from the opposite of symmetry, and is visually designed to stand out in contrast to other character designs as a result of this. Symmetry is so boring. There's a lot of talk when it comes to Jin's design aesthetically, and I can see why he's one of the most iconic champions when players talk about champion design. What I see less spoken about is the organization that he works with. Jin's weapons are not from his own craft, nor are they simple in nature. Kado Jin acts as the virtuoso of an organization known as the Kashuri. My genius will be understood, eventually. Imprisoned within Tula on the island of Zion, Jin revealed as little about himself as possible during the duration of his imprisonment. It was noted by the monks that guarded him during this imprisonment that some of these skills included smithing, poetry, and dance. But in terms of answers to his identity or past, there was little to find. As Jin sat within the walls of Tula, the borders of Ionia were breached by that of Noxian militia. Ionia has typically been seen as an isolative and self-sufficient land that has avoided involving itself within the wars that have surfaced across Runeterra, but Noxus had now directed its rampaging warbands towards Ionia. The invasion of Ionia was sudden and violent. A hard-fought war against Noxus from Ionia led the people to rethink their perspectives as an isolated nation uninvolved in the conflicts of others. Master Kusho, however, was not within this strand of thought. After the Noxian invasion had passed, he neglected the idea of returning to peace. Master Kusho released Kada Jin from Tula and had him move to the coastal settlement of Kashuri. It was confirmed in Z issue 6 that Master Kusho was responsible for the release of Jin. And issue 6 also confirmed and showed the fight between Z and Master Kusho that resulted in Z killing Shen's father. Kashuri is another settlement on the island of Zion, and is home to the Kashuri armories of Ionia. Before the invasion, these armories were used to create more classical Ionian weaponry, such as bows and swords. But after the Noxian invasion, the armories tried to replicate the Hextech weaponry of Piltover with diminished success. Following a form of inspiration, the Kashuri armories have started to create unique weapons that harness the natural magic of Ionia. Given access to the Kashuri weaponry, and now released from Tula, Jin had been re-enabled through the actions of Master Kusho to wreak havoc upon the lands of Ionia once more. This time, however, it would be with some assistance that was revealed in Legends of Runeterra. The trigger on a loaded weapon. It whispers for us to act. During his time with the Kashuri, Kada Jin was able to obtain a unique weapon that is suited towards his specific nature and methodology of combat. 
Whisper, the pistol rifle hybrid that Jin uses can be extended and minimized as fit to match the required weapon for different scenarios. In addition to this, he obtained his dancing grenades and lotus traps to add to his collection of tools. These weapons are both iconic to Jin's unique style of attack and are suited towards his aesthetics, but they were not made by Jin. These weapons were created by a member of the Kashuri known as the Maker, who was revealed within Legends of Runeterra in the same set as Jin. The Maker can be assumed to be a worker of the Kashuri armory that was inspired to channel Ionia's natural magics into weaponry after the failed attempts at replicating Piltover's Hextech technology. While Jin's methodology of selecting targets remains unknown, it is suggested that the Kashuri Order operates its own agenda of assassinations or selection of targets through a member known as the Witness. The Witness wears a large headpiece with many optical pieces similar to that of Master Yi, but quite clearly serves a different morality to that of Wuju. They can be seen with the Kashuri spies, winged creatures within the artwork wearing similar headpieces to that of the Witness. To every grand performance, there must be preparation, and in preparing for these acts of violence, Jin has become acquainted with the likes of the Stagehand, who can be seen working with a much larger version of Jin's lotus traps in their artwork. The Stagehand is different from the rest of the Kashuri in terms of aesthetics. They appear to wear more druidic clothes, including a wreath made of sticks and twigs around their neck. From the voice lines provided for the stagehand, it can also be suggested that they are not a permanent member of the Kashuri, but a sacrificial one. I'll go into more detail surrounding this when we put it all together. In total, four members create the group of Kada Jin's Kashuri Collective, and this is rather fitting considering his obsession with the number four. The Noxian invasion should be a wake-up call. We need more elaborate productions. We open on the city of Kianvi, where an old master summons a young pupil. He is tasked with disposing a group of nefarious villains and recovering stolen sacred artifacts. The actor is keen, but he does not as yet take his place. For now, he simply prepares, waiting in the wings. An ex-soldier, having abandoned his post following the theft of an ancient Kashuri artifact, hides at a Kianvi bar, full of arrogance and too much drink. Little does he know, his stolen treasure whispers of all it sees to its true owner. His life pours away like so much wine, Noxian crimson on Ionian gold. What? A duplicitous lord, with little to his name, but a pilfered Kashuri gauntlet, charms an audience of Ionians. However, his mask is crude and easily seen through. He begs for his life, claiming ignorance. The iron hand he sought to rule with lies empty. Two. A cruel keeper and her pet. The greyback is innocent even in grisly purpose. The artifact it bears forces subservience. The keeper refuses to scream as she is fed to her pet. If only all Noxians were so noble in their demise. Three. A young priestess enters our story. Her tale is one of tragedy, conveyed on the pale lips of those she betrayed. Desperate to repent for her transgression, she carries in her arms a great burden, a gilded gift for the Noxians she welcomed to her land. We are left to wonder, was it sorrow or the bullet that broke her heart? Four. As I mentioned earlier, the stagehand is likely a sacrificial member. Her dialogue within the game suggests that she is the closing act for this sequence. Come dear, you will bring our show to a close. The final act must be performed with conviction. And when dying in-game, the dialogue for her death is... It's... done! How you want to interpret this information 
is up to you. For me, it looks like the Kashuri have a sacrificial member who was used in order to further the goals of the mission by sacrificing themselves to trigger the explosive that can be seen in Jin's artwork after he levels up in Legends of Runeterra. There's also the counting. Jin counts from 1 to 4 as each of the acts die within Legends of Runeterra, and the stagehand dying will trigger Jin to shout 4, the final number in his sequence. Jin and the Kashuri are obsessive and maniacal, to the point they would sacrifice the stagehand as part of their methodology to terrify the people of Ionia. The actions and mindset of Jin are almost perfectly suited to that of the Kashuri in their brutal fashion of execution and veiled nature. Carter Jin is a man of many mysteries, and a character that we may never have a full explanation or understanding of. He is a character that is unique in both his aesthetics and origin to the extent that he has become an iconic figure for the League of Legends community. A maniacal assassin, once imprisoned and re-enabled through the actions of Master Kusho and the Kashuri armories, Jin is one of the more complex characters that exists within the world of Runeterra. Putting the pieces together and trying to understand Jin took a while, and for anyone interested in finding out more about the character, I highly recommend his universe page from Riot Games or the Zed series which focuses on Jin as the antagonist for its duration. While I wish that there were more answers regarding Jin's true identity, or maybe some further insight into the Kashiri, it's been great to finally go over the timeline of Kata Jin and discuss some of his mystery. We can only hope that we receive more updates and answers along the way. But for now, this is the lore of Jin. So there we have it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you're interested in the content. I stream occasionally on Twitch and you can find my links down below. Take care. One, two, three, four.